What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you my first impressions of Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. So I play and review a ton of CRPGs if this happens to be the first video of mine that you're watching, and typically I'll review games after 100%. But I will also usually, especially if I haven't played a game before, give my first impressions while I'm at it. That said, Arcanum I won't be reviewing after 100% because there is no public way for me to prove that I have done so. There's no achievements. It's a fairly older game. So this will just be a regular review once I get to that point. Just giving everybody a heads up. But that said, I was very curious to get into Arcanum here because this is hands down probably the most requested game for me to review in terms of CRPGs. There's a lot of common ones you see, a lot of them I've done already, but Arcanum is hands down the most requested one that I had not gotten to yet. And simply because of that, I was very curious to check out this title. Now that said, the very first things I learned very quickly are, one, this game to this day in its original state is incredibly buggy, and apparently there's a problem with Windows 10 specifically that will cause your frame rate to be like 15 FPS. So because of that, I went ahead and downloaded the unofficial patch, which makes the game run so much better. It just clears up a lot of the bugs, makes it more compatible, gives you a higher resolution. And while it can restore cut content and things, there is an option to turn all that stuff off. So I wanted the actual regular version of the game, so to speak. So all I did was just the unofficial patch part that fixes the bugs and upscales the resolution. Now, the other thing I learned is that the game comes with a manual and you need to read it. So when you purchase this from Steam or wherever, it should come with a manual and it, it's pretty much required reading for real. The character system is very dense and basically you get one set of character points one every regular level and then at intervals of five you get two points and those points have to be divided between your attributes your skills your magic if you want to use it so there are just a million options for character creation and because of that just trying to build a character you really need to read that manual first and in addition to doing that I actually played through the game with uh, two like burner characters basically where I was just trying to get my footing and I knew I was gonna restart and I went through two of those characters before I decided what I wanted to do and kind of got a feel for the game and my main takeaway there is that the game really seems to focus on specialized characters because there's just such a broad assortment of things to spend your character points on and the regular level cap in game is 50. You only get 50 points to spread across an absolute nonsense amount of things. Specialized characters are the way to go, which personally I'm actually a fan of. I think that adds a lot to replayability. I think it helps you build a character that isn't a jack of all trades, which is what I'm looking for in an RPG. So I like that quite a bit. One thing I did want to mention specifically, because I thought it was uh, very interesting actually. So outside of attributes and things, you have combat skills, social skills, uh, technical skills, like that, that type of stuff that you'll put points into on a scale of one to five. And while putting points into that will make you better at it and more likely to succeed, that's great. There's actually a whole nother training system. Now, my initial thoughts was the training system just increased your rank or whatever for that particular skill. But no, the training system is in addition to your ranks in that skill. So you can be untrained, an apprentice, an expert, or master. Untrained just means no bonuses. It just means your raw skill. Whereas Apprentice will usually just make you dramatically better. Melee, for instance, just gives you an extra five melee speed, which is a pretty big bonus, actually. And then each individual skill has ranks in this. Now, to train something, you have to go find a trainer. In the first two ranks, Apprentice and Expert, you just got to pay some gold. But the Master rank, you actually have to do a specialized quest for that skill, which I thought, honestly, was just really cool. So I wanted to mention it here in my first impressions. Another really cool thing, and this kind of pervades the entire world of Arcanum, and I just wanted to talk about it a little bit, was that the entire world is basically in the process of an industrial revolution brought on very recently. And this has caused a bunch of problems between the technology of the world and the magic of the world, because this is like high fantasy, but also an industrial revolution. So tech and magic don't really get along. In fact, if one of those things is more potent in an area than another, that is to say, say there's a bunch of machinery around, then magic just won't work. And if there's a bunch of magic around, your machinery just won't work. So they tend to cancel each other out based on what there's more of. And that's carried on even with your character. So if your character has an affinity for magic, you just can't use tech stuff because it won't work. Or if you're using a character that is really all about your tech skills, you can't even heal that person with magic because it won't work. And I thought that was a very interesting dichotomy to have in a game like this, a very unique idea. And I would say that's probably my 
biggest takeaway from my first impressions is the world of Arcanum is very unique. I can't say I've ever played anything quite like it. And in addition to just the really cool setup with the tech and the magic and the weird industrial revolution in the background, the way you can approach quests and stuff is really wide open. Say you need to get an item from a person, you can steal it, you can kill that person, you can usually persuade them just to give it to you. And there tends to be a lot of options like that and a lot of ways to solve quests, which I'm a big fan of. And while I don't want to ramble on too long, my main takeaways for my first impressions here are basically that character creation is very unique and offers a ton of depth, though some of the stuff does feel a little more useful than others, as you might imagine. And the other takeaway is just how unique and charming this world is, because again, it's just kind of unique. I haven't experienced anything quite like it before, and I'm really enjoying the interactions and things. And while there are some negative things I've noticed, I'll kind of save that stuff for the review. Getting past the initial confusion of like character creation and everything, because it's its own unique system that you just kind of have to figure out. I'm very much so enjoying this, and I'm looking forward to completing this and actually doing a full-blown review. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom, and have an amazing day.